You're watching Mall Rats, a Star Wars podcast. Thank you for listening. Hey, welcome to the podcast Mall Rats, where we talk about uh, pretty much anything Star Wars that's happening now and uh, focusing currently on the Book of Boba Fett uh, after show recaps. Uh, I'm Bob. I'm Nolan. And uh, we're coming to you a, a day later than intended. I'm sorry about that. It's your fault. It is my fault. I apologize. Uh, we were all ready to do it yesterday, uh, yesterday being Thursday with the Wednesday premieres. Uh, we want to get it out as soon as we can so it's timely and relevant for anyone that's listening in real time. For those that are, you know, doing it, you know, who knows, days or weeks later, it really doesn't matter. But mm -hmm. want to be a little timelier but uh work uh was a little exhausted when we got home and i just didn't really have the energy but we were all ready to go so today promise we will have energy uh, okay i'll have energy yeah we'll have energy have to, yeah yeah <laughs> otherwise it's gonna be boring and we don't want that um so we're here today to talk about uh episode four called the gathering storm uh, i clocked in at 47 minutes uh, and premiered on the uh, what the nineteenth of January, um, directed by Kevin Tancharen. Uh huh. Uh huh. You ever hear of him? No. Me neither. Me Good. neither. Uh, so I kind of I kind of like the fact that they're bringing in new people, training new people, and just not you know recycling the same two or three people. Mando kind of recycled. Um, which was good because that's only two seasons. But this gentleman, uh, looking him up, he has a lot of experience in television. Um, he did some uh, a few DC WB shows, uh, three episodes of The Flash and Arrow. He did a Supergirl one one off. Um, but he did Agents of Shield, so he has some Marvel experience. So he did 16 episodes of that, which is pretty much almost a full season, uh, and uh, one episode of Iron Fist, a Netflix uh, Marvel one. So he has a lot of experience with action. A lot of experience with comic book and uh, universes that have already been developed. This episode didn't really seem too action-y, though. I would agree. Yeah. I would agree. Um, comfort, um, comparatively to some of the other ones or what it could have been. But I think my point was that he is somebody who can go and play in other people's sandboxes that yeah. have already been developed. And he seems to keep getting work, so he must be pretty solid um there was one thing and we were talking about this earlier um the music in this i was thinking it was majority of the mando musician uh ludwig Göransson, who won two emmys for both seasons mm -hmm. uh, and an oscar for black panther but it's actually joseph shirely and this is the first episode that the music um other than a little instrumental here or there music really stood out to me in this episode i wonder um, why I don't know, but uh, there were little callbacks and, you know... Uh, uh, oh, one in specific. Yeah, well, well, there were two, but the one at the end was like, it oh, happened, that's it awesome. It happened twice, but it was But the music thing. during the modifier scene, it was just very techno, and it was just so not what we've come to think of Star Wars. You know, my whole generation, anyone who, I guess, was just based on the, the, the nine episodes... Uh, movies, it was always just John Williams, just classical, you know, beautiful scores. Now, and, uh, and this one was just very pop funk, um, and it was it was intriguing, and, and it played well for the scene. But um, so I don't think I've given this guy a shout out before. So um, he he's there now. So uh, I guess before we get into the scenes, um, what were your thoughts of the episode? Are you pleased with where we were going? We had a lot of hope for this particular episode. I think. Um, it went about how I thought it would from, you know, they're not going to go too far into the season without showing all of the trailer. Oh, yeah, yeah. The scenes of that. And and the only thing we hadn't seen was the the round table, you know, yeah. discussion. Uh -huh. And also in the in the the flashback also kind of finishes up and we sort of are done with flashbacks, I think. Yeah, I was going to, I had jotted down that note. Uh, do you think we are completely, do you think we're not going to go back anymore? I think we're still going to go back, but I don't really think we're going to spend too much time of an episode there. Sort of like how this episode was, how it sort of started out of flashbacks and was in flashbacks, then it was majority out of it. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to keep doing that instead of just focusing on 
the past now that we kind of have gathered everything that we need to i yeah there were a lot of boxes that were checked off with we you know when we were wondering what's happening like in the first episode how does he get out of sarlacc you know all of the, those were checked off boxes yeah um how he gets his armor we found out in mando so um the ones about fennec in his relationship we'll talk more about that those got checked and then his ship which is something i've been thinking about I'm not, i can't quite remember if we've brought it up in our discussions uh of the podcast but uh did he I mean, he flew to Jabba's in his, you know, ship. Why didn't he go get that? You know, but uh, so we get to see why in a little bit. Um, with this being episode four, we only have five, six, and seven left. Which you said were the ones that the DP was yes. very excited about. Yeah, the DP, the director of photography that we talked about, I think it was last episode, uh, got started with Kevin Smith. And on one of his recent podcasts, Fat Man Beyond, he said uh, his parting thing as he signed off, they were like... Uh, you can't spoil anything. You're, you know, um, you, you can't, t you know, Disney and, and Star Wars are pretty tight lipped. But uh, what, what do we have to look forward to? What are you excited about? Any, any, any five, six, five and seven. six, and seven. Uh, and so uh, they're setting up all of the, the dominoes for a really interesting ending. Yeah. I mean, the, the rancor from the previous episodes, uh, him hiring a uh, Kersantan, uh, who Garza calls Santo. So um, that's a little pet name i guess but um i'm yeah i'm really intrigued i, I kind of think we've the exposition has i don't want to say completely over but i think we're ready for the rising action yeah, now. yeah it's pretty much over. the rising action is, is good so um i enjoyed it i thought there were uh, a lot of great moments um i didn't have as many kind of downer distracting moments like i did last episode with you know the biker gang on their little mopeds and Lord. just little things like that um and uh, I, I found this pretty intriguing. I, like you said, we start off with a, a flashback in a back to tank. And that's why uh, when he comes out of it, you know, the droid says later, you know, you're, you're fully healed. You're done. And if flashbacks only are shared during his back to, it's almost like signaling we're done. Oh. Yeah, I didn't think about that. You, you know what I mean? It. I mean, he can still have yeah. him in his dreams, et cetera, but every time he's had a flashback, he's in his, he's in his back to. Yeah, I think it's the most, like, the slowest and most inefficient back to tank ever if it takes us four episodes to get rid of his scars on his head. Um, yeah, that's fair. Because in the movies, like, of course, you only see the tail end, but, like, mm -hmm. in the Darth Bane book that I'm reading, he gets, like, he's about to die, then... Oh, look, he's alive now in only like six hours. Oh, the back to healed in a month that quickly? So I'm in flashback, probably close to that. Hmm. If he's sleeping in there. Yeah. Yeah, and who knows how long, he, how long he's in there for. Um, so we start off with this episode writing his Bantha again, which um, listening to that interview with the, the DP of this, he talked about that uh, the Bantha, they have one puppet Bantha. And so the one you see him riding is just a large, I don't know if he said three or four person controlled puppet. <laughs> and so if you watch him just move and how it just kind of slowly, you know, walks around uh, and knowing now that that's a, a puppet, um, it's pretty fantastic. Um, and then the close up of the Bantha's face around the fire <laughs> later was a cute little moment. Yeah. Um, so we don't know what he's doing right off the bat and where he's riding to. Um, you know, he, we see that he's, he's outside Jabba's palace look you know uh scoping out people um i did not make the connection yet he's going for his ship yeah you can kind of but figure it just you don't it, it makes put, sense put the two dots together because where is his ship yeah Gonna it just hasn't there. been addressed yeah yeah and so curious what was going on with that uh and he sees a bunch of uh, i think that i think he saw some nictos or the the Klaatuinians, just a lot of thugs and guards walking around knowing that he can't get into it. Um, and so then there's a cute moment where he goes, okay, not today, girl, let's go eat. And he talks to the Bantha like, well, it's a pet. And Part of the family. A, a family. And if he grew up alone, if his dad was running off on you know trips on Camino, uh, he didn't have a pet. He didn't have family and warmth. So the, f the, the family structure of the Tuscans was probably very um, appealing to him. Even if he hadn't thought about it too much. No, they're dead. And now they're dead. And we see later, you know, he feels very uh, responsible for it, as he should. He, yeah, he is. Um, 
then there was a talk about the flares. He's having dinner. He feeds the bantha. The bantha burps. It's cute. Star Wars likes burping. You know, the toads eat things, you know, and then it burps, you know, whatever. But, okay. <laughs> and it's like, come on. But um, it's just a cheap, easy laugh. But then uh, we see flares. We see these bright lights and it is something exploding, fireworks. And then all of a sudden we start to kind of connect the dots. Uh, he walks towards, well, I'm assuming walking because he left the bantha behind. We see a bantha pull up in yeah. the Mandalorian, though. So, anyways, uh, he's walking, and he gets to the source of where these flares are, and he sees a beaten Fennec Shand from uh, the Gunslinger episode in Season 1. And, of course, you thought it was Cad Bane. I was hoping. Episode, but now we know that it's not. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, I, I didn't yeah. think that... Once we established Boba and Fennec in the Mandalorian later on, you just we knew we made that connection. But I remember people talking about when that Mandalorian episode was on and she was shot, and then I think it was the it wasn't a post credit scene. I think it was just the last scene. He walks into frame and somebody talked about how you could hear spurs. Yeah, you and could hear spurs. and Cad Bane is a legit you know <laughs> cowboy from the West. You know, Western the man with no name. You know, the Clint Eastwood movies, but um. Yeah, and, and so when the flares went up, the first one, I'm like, oh, what's that? And then there was another. I'm like, wait a minute. This seems familiar. And then it connects it to that's when Mando and his other little guy. Um, God, what was that kid's name? Um, oh, uh, um, Toro. Toro. I, I know him because he, the actor is Bobby Cannavale, a Broadway actor. Oh, TV and stuff more so, I guess. But uh, in movies, um, it's his son. And so that's when they're charging her because she's going to snipe out. And so they have to blind her night vision. Toro Calican. Toro Calican. Toro. OK. Um, and so anyway, we don't have we don't see Mando. We don't see Toro. Um, but he uh, he does get the bantha and rides over and, and scoops her up. And then he takes her to Moss Eisley to uh, a modifier shop, a mod shop, where we see a lot of those kids getting the cybernetic whatever. Yep. So this shows us that. When he hears about the this, it's not the first time, right? These street urchins or whatever, he he's familiar with it. Um, and this is where the music played, and it was interesting. And a guy's in there doing surgery. It looks like a, a combination of uh, what a tattoo parlor, um, plastic surgery, I guess, in a way. Um, but what what did you think about that scene? Uh, I thought it was really interesting to see. It's sort of like their kind of surgery without like. A whole back to tank necessary. It's just it's all elective surgery. Yeah, it rips things out, put in mechanical stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, I noticed something in this part. It was really like right at the end of the whole sequence. There were uh, two tubes going through. Yeah, sort of filled with liquid, and they were blue and red, which reminded me of like arteries and veins. So oh. I don't know if if that was being like special little blood ducts, and one was with oxygen, one with was without which would make it blue if Interesting. It had oxygen okay i did science uh yes i looked at it as uh just uh hydraulics probably yeah the the blue obviously i was thinking it was more that and then the red could have just been he reconnected a blood supply i love how you made the the, the anatomy connection all right you just like see the pictures of all the you know the circulatory system and yeah all. Yeah. Uh, that guy was interesting. He's listed as the modifier. Uh, he's not an actor. He's a music guy. His name is Steven Bruner, or he goes by the name Thundercat. Thundercat. I Thundercat saw that. Ho. Um, and it said he has a he contributed a song or something to the Venom uh, Two soundtrack. It was kind of his main main thing that I oh. saw. But uh, I thought he was interesting. I mean, I didn't notice. Oh, you're a non actor. I thought I thought he was fine. He provided information. Um, uh, not information, but uh, uh, when when man not Mando Boba, uh, you know walks in, she's about to die. He goes, well, you should have led with that anyways. And, you know, after he dropped, dropped the a bunch, coins. shot the money, you pay, I'll I'll, I'll take care of it. Um, I like watching him go to work on her. Um, he had this right arm that just had all of these. It was like straight up Inspector Gadget. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just yeah. all of these things that could just pop it's out. Purpose here Swiss Army knife. A arm. very much Swiss Army knife. Um, and so it was just a cute little scene and then like, okay, well, that's how she got cybernetic midsection, you know, there goes, you know, swimsuit season and they don't cover it up with, you know, synth flesh or anything. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that we can go out to the desert and she wakes up 
you know, and he hands her a melon. She doesn't know who he is. Um, if he wore his armor, she probably would know. You know, but yeah. he he's <laughs> doesn't have that. Boba um, Fett is dead. And she looks at her stomach and is like, what happened? What did you do to me? Um, it's like if you see any sort of movies where, you know, people will uh, uh, get kidnapped or wake up in a tub of ice, you know, with a sign that says, you know, we, we took your kidney or, or whatever. Um, you know, she goes, what, what did you do to me? What did you do? And he goes, well, I saved your life. I saved your yeah. life. That's and, and that's where, uh, you know, they – and I, I – there's a lot of fireside chats in this episode mm -hmm. um and i really thought that uh uh tamura morrison who's playing boba fett he's really i mean i think he's doing a nice job acting and it's yeah. very subtle and his face which is completely acid you know scarred at this particular point but there's such intensity he's very commanding for a 61 year old guy oh is that how old the actor is yeah and really, I don't know his work outside of it's just Star Wars. Aquaman and Star Wars, you know, because he's Arthur's yeah, dad. He was the dad, Nicole Kidman's husband. Yeah, well, husband, second husband. I don't remember. She she ran away. But anyways, um, and so I'm really getting to see him do his chops. And you know, when he's kind of sitting in his chairs, you know, as Boba and, and the president, you see just a calmness in his eye. I, I don't know. I I'm seeing choices being made that are very subtle and and yet very strong. Very strong. Especially if he keeps saying I'm Boba Fett. You know, he says that Fett. a lot. And respect. Fett. Fett. Um, and so, um, uh, yeah, so he says I'm Boba Fett. And she goes, Boba Fett's dead. And he knows who she is. He recognizes her, which plays in line with that there's bounties. They probably just knew each other. Like, not know each other, but they exist. Well, like, he knows if she didn't exist. know him because he didn't have his stuff. Yes. Well, nobody knows who Boba Fett is under the helmet. Well, at this point, I guess true, but I don't think he goes by. I don't think he goes by that creed necessarily, as quote the, unquote. But nobody's really seen. We're not in the movies. Or, but when he go, when he meets Mando, and he's taking his helmet off and talking to him, and it, it, you know, and he's like, "Where'd you get your armor? I want it back. You're not Mando. Do you?" Follow the creed, you know all that stuff. Yeah. Um. But remember, he was a he was a bounty hunter, and that's why the kid Toro was looking for her because there was such a big bounty. So people are always looking for her. In the Believer episode, she can't go in with Bill Burr because she goes facial recognition. I will show up because I'm wanted by the Empire. Uh -huh. So she's known, and and he he respects her, and and so he recruits her to help me get my ship. Um. I need to get my fire spray gunship. And Star Wars fans a better took a deep breath. Why? So, it was never directly associated or named as, like, Slave 1 or Slave 2. It was, like, on the Lego sets, in the games, uh, everything else. In the books, in the books. comics, I don't, Slave 1, you know. I don't know if they're really just changing the name just because, like, it's Slave. But... I, because it's the word slave. I mean, yeah, we've been okay with it all this for time. a very long time. Well, what's changed? Disney. Disney purchased it, and Disney is probably can't going have to slaves associated and with Disney, Disney. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, they talk about uh, how uh, Chrysanthemum is in the, um, you know, uh, gladiator pits and the stuff. Pit. But a lot of those, uh, according to the expanded universe, is you know they were slaves. You know, some of them. But um, that's why they say gladiator. Yeah, but a few months ago, the article came out. And they said that Slave One won't be referred to that anymore. It'll just be Boba Fett's ship. And so now they're calling it Fire Spray, which it's always been referred to as Fire Spray as a type of ship. I think he doesn't name it now. He just kind of calls it that. Yeah, my Fire Spray is like, bring me my Mustang or bring me my, yeah. you know, that help me get my I mean, thing back. You don't really name your car. unless you're Well, but in Star Wars, you know, the, the, the Millennium Falcon is a Carillion freighter, you know, and, instead of Fire Spray. Uh, white tea freighter and and we like uh the firefly show firefly is the type it's like fire spray um serenity was the name of the actual ship but people would talk about the firefly class you know that type of thing yes. so anyways this is the first time that it's been spoken that i that i've heard and seen um and he says hey your debt is paid if you help me yeah so let's go do it um then we jump to jabba's place at night um where uh they are confirming you know scouting out just like he started the episode um 
excuse me, and they can't get too close. They don't know how many people are there. So she sends out a probe. And this probe is very familiar. Um, you know, it's just a small little ball with red lights, which I thought it's nighttime and very, that's going to show up. Yeah. But it just zooms around, you know, a little ball, you know, just zooming around, mapping everything. And it instantly reminded me of the movie Prometheus, which was an alien prequel. Um, and uh, that was the same type of thing. They'd send something out, and it would go and map the whole ship in 3D. And so I liked when they finally got to see that. You got to see more of Jabba's palace than you've ever seen before outside of a you know a Battlefront video game, because visually it was just mainly the throne room, right? Yes. I, I can, and the hallway um, entering the the palace. So I enjoyed that part, um, and that was really I thought pretty cool. Um, and then it comes back to the a fireside chat where he talks about and he goes into great detail about. Um, she goes, "What's next for you?" He goes, "I want to find my armor." And then kill that bloated pig who double crossed me. So that's Bib Fortuna. Yep. But do we know what he's talking about? He a double cross? He probably confronted him about the ship at some point between the the big four or five year gap of Tuscan flashbacks and now. So I think at some point he probably talked to him about the ship and then he's like, No. So it's stuff something. that we haven't seen and we just assume that there's something. Because the last time, you know, before he ended up in the Sarlacc, they're both on the sail barge. Yep. And there's, I don't know of any double crossing because Jabba would have double crossed. So I think it's just something that I don't know if they're going to talk about anymore or just leave it at that. Um, but Boba says, I'm tired of working for idiots trying to get me killed, you know, just for money. He wants to be the boss and he has a plan to make a lot of money doing it. And so he needs to get his, uh, his ship. He needs to get his gear, which we'll see that down the road. Um, and so they eventually uh, break in. Um, they sneak in through the sewers, which seems to be how everybody takes a castle or um, a Those stronghold. The sewers? Well, I mean, it was a water runoff that has steel bars. Yeah. You know, and that's how, you know, in two towers, that's how they take down Helm's Deep and Breach. You know, that's a, a weakness point. Um, and so we, we have a kitchen scene. Talk to us about the kitchen scene, how they break in. Uh, so they're crawling around the sewers, and then we see two cooking robots. Uh, one I don't know the name of, and then mentioned before, uh, EV929. Or it's, it's 99. What EV99. Ever, whatever. Yeah. Anyway. It's that, that, ty it's yes. that type of droid. Yes. It's not necessarily him. I didn't say that. But, okay. But it's an EV type unit we see him in jedi is what you're saying right yep. he's the one who does the restraining bolts mm -hmm. okay all right so they're cooking what's going on talk about the scene what did you did you like the scene was it necessary was it what did it do for you i think it wasn't really necessary it just tried to be comedy like because i don't really think w without it they would just kind of go in and not find any resistance but fighting chefs with like general grievous swirling knife arms right that was interesting eh, it's kind of weird so anyways uh they bang on the grate and uh ev99 is uh like are those the rats again goes to check it out and then he gets backhanded with the grate <laughs> and then it's a battle it's a battle it's a and, battle uh but well it's a very short one because he just shows off that hey i have six arms with what big cleavers in them and then he starts spinning them and the magnesium uh sort of yeah yeah the bright light metal that, breaker mm -hmm. thing. she sneaks up behind him and slits his throat you know i mean if you think about it in that regard and uh, then the head just falls off um but okay uh, that was easy they dispensed them they shouldn't have had much resistance but then it was kind of cute they had a little droid that i've seen before in the clone wars cartoon i didn't know what it was called it was called an lep droid um, really short, kind of waddles, has these antenna slash ears that move around, and he has expressions. And then Boba got to chase him around. It was just complete comedy, climbing around. <laughs> um, the the greatest part of the episode, uh, probably. Maybe. Picks him up, about to interrogate him, like some classic old Rattle em Boys movie. And then it just opens this little thing on his chest and then hits its power button. Sort of like taking a cyanide pill, which is oh, <laughs> just you're right. all of a sudden... Well, he goes, I Over. am Boba Fett. 
and then, then just he flips his flips own switch. And he just dies. <laughs> and it goes, and, and you hear, uh, you know, a lot of little noises like you would have heard, you know, from, um, you know, the, the sequel movies, you know, with BB-8 or R2 even, um, that have a lot of emotion in them. So I, I found that moment cute, um, and it was fine. I, I was okay with it. It didn't take me out too much. Um, and so they finally end up in the hangar scene. Um, I guess no alarms had been tripped, but yet two Gamorians come running in. Like, something has happened. Uh, I don't know. So they dispense of those two Gamorians, and then an alarm actually sounds. And then everybody descends on there, um, where Boba jumps into the ship, um, you know, tries to get it fired up. It's been sitting there for years, um, which kind of is interesting to me. Why wouldn't they have, I don't know, done something rid of it? Like, sell it? Uh, modify it, use it. That would have been a good "quote unquote" double cross. Is selling the ship. That could have been. I yeah, that would have been good. But no. Or yeah, maybe he had tried to get it back, and the dude didn't let him. And yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Are we done with this part? Uh, I think so. They they blast out of there. It, it's really a Fennec show yeah. where she gets to Just fight shoot. and and do stuff, and then she has her hero moment where um you know they they spin a guy. They can't the blast show. out of there. She has to shoot the weight that's holding the door. And then as the door's closing, the last hero shot, she just looks really content. Mm -hmm. And and, and I, I like that. So right after this, we go sort of flying as like a, I don't know, some sort of a heartwarming part with uh, just flying around. He's back with the ship. Great moment. Oh, uh, riding off in the sunset. Yeah. yeah. Here I noticed... I watched this like three times yesterday. Oh, nice. Uh, just this one part because I think I noticed something. Oh. They're doing this panning shot of like the sky before it gets all bright and orange. And then you see three moons, which I thought was interesting. Oh, up in the corner. Yes. So Moons or other planets or, or they something? They were moons. Okay. Apparently, Tatooine has two suns and three moons, which I just think is too extra. Interesting. Than it really needs. Yeah. Huh. I didn't think about it too much other than, yeah, it was pretty, though. It's beautiful. Right after this, we go yes. have a lot of fun. A lot of revenge. A lot of revenge. No dialogue. Just a flyby. Uh, you see these. Uh, beautiful shot. The Nikto biker gang. They're just riding. You know, they're fine. Nothing happens. And then you just see this in the background. Uh, the slave, uh, fire spray yes. goes down and then just lays waste to everybody in like 10 they seconds. They don't even see it coming. It just They're comes, just drops out of the clouds, silently shows up, and he just wastes them. I don't really know how he found them in the entirety of everything. Oh, I don't know. Without like knowing where they go. I don't know. No, but don't know. Uh, it was beautiful, and then uh, <laughs> as much as a massacre can be beautiful. But the moment that he looks over at Fennec, and they just kind of have a moment where they look, and then a slight nod, like, good. He's now like, they're done. Now we're good. Um, so then we jump over, or he sails over because, uh, you know, he has some, um, what did he say? I, he had scores to settle. Unfinished Oh, business. we talked, yeah. Um, but uh, after they get the ship, he goes, where do you want me to drop you? Because sh her debt's paid. I'm going along for the ride. And she goes, I'll go along for the ride. Where are you headed? Well, I have a few scores. I'll go along because, well, he's capable and she is a wanted person. And so she's safe-ish with him, it appears, so she'll go along. Um, but this next scene was really interesting because they flew over the wreckage of Jabba's old sail barge and the Sarlacc. And then I love the the gyroscopic nature of his fire spray. Sort of how it, It's going very slow, and then it pivots, so they're facing straight down, and they start to enter. What are they looking for? This is where I'm kind of... Is it a plot hole? I'm confused. Yeah, it is kind of a missed detail. Maybe he was kind of in a fugue state, but he goes looking for his armor, which we know we see him in the first episode flashback. We see him crawling out with the armor, and then the Jawas take it, and then you see it in the Marshal, how uh, Cobb Vance takes it. So obviously it's not in there. I wonder what he was really looking for. Or he was actually looking for his armor and he just doesn't know. And that's my thing. I'm like, maybe he had a concussion and forgot, but how did he think he escaped if without the yeah, armor? If he says that uh Fennec says that the acid will have burnt it and then he says Not Beskar. Not Beskar. Yeah. So obviously 
how did he get out? I don't. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to keep. I, I just <laughs> that seemed like is is it because he's older? He's forgetting now, but he forgot where he placed the remote. I mean, it was five years ago. It was. It was. But I mean, that's his identity. He says in this at some point, um, you know, why why don't you go ask B uh, Bib for the ship? And he goes, well, I'm a lot. What do you say? Like I'm a lot more intimidating with it with my armor, you know. Yeah. And so they got to sneak around. Um, and so they're 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 creeping down and they're actually entering the mall of it and they're just slowly looking around and if you go back and watch the first episode when he blasts out and fire and then he rebirths himself out of the sand you see a two tendrils just laying there limp like they're dead well i thought the sarlacc was dead maybe it was knocked out no uh in the first one that tendril that you claim is dead you can actually see that it, it was the one that Lando shot in the movie. The one that, like... Oh, you think? It, it, it was. It was the one that was just laying there. It ben, was separated okay. from the actual Sarlacc. Okay. Yeah, you forget about those. Okay, very good. So, anyway, uh, so, I guess he burned a hole out of its side, and that thing can heal, I guess. But um, he starts going down, and then you get the jump scare of that, that beak light beak. The thing from wow. the special edition that comes up like a... It reminded me of uh, Little Shop of Horrors, the Audrey 2 plant. You know, feed me. And it just comes out and, and grabs at them. Uh, the tendrils lash out, and he's trying to blast away and can't um, until they escape by... Probably, I don't... I wouldn't call it fan service, but, you know, everyone loves it. He drops mm -hmm. uh, one of his... Uh, it was like sonic uh like a sonic bomb or sonic charge something bomb. uh no it yeah uh uh something charge seismic charge mm. anyways uh fennec presses an overhead button and <clears throat> it releases one of the seismic charges and barely very barely <laughs> tips over yeah. just right into the hole which you think in space you see just how big the explosion is mm. it probably would have hit them if we were using any sort of logic here. Well, we've seen it blow up before, and it's a lateral. It's just uh, huge, you know, so, and side to side. In space, if it looks that big compared to the huge asteroids that you see in Attack of the Clones, mm -hmm. it would have, I don't know, done something. But it falls in, and then it just goes off, and it's great because it's under the sand. So there's not really any damage. But then, I don't know, you kind of see uh, the, the wreckage kind of tremble and it's like mm -hmm. it's sinkhole but there's no sinkhole it just kind of moved it just shuffled the uh, you know exploded and and made some uh you know like an underwater explosion that water's got to go somewhere right oh. with the displacement and with this the seismic charges that we've seen have shot out sideways and so they were technically over it so it wouldn't necessarily vertically got them like a an atom bomb mushroom cloud goes up unless you they know. were unlucky yeah, unless they were unlucky. Up. But uh, they got very lucky by dropping that bomb, and it just slides off just and barely. falls in. Um, so I think that that one's dead. So um, he couldn't see the armor, and so the next scene, uh, we have him repelling. Well, not down. We see him coming up. So he actually went down without armor, and he comes out all burning acidy again, and he can't find the armor. Yeah. And so that's where it was like, I went back. back to, I went back to check the first episode when he, you know, when the Jawas come, he actually grabs one of the Jawas' ankles before he gets knocked out, right? And then the Sand People show up and take him. So maybe he doesn't remember Some sort the of Jawas confession. picking him up. Maybe. But so he has no idea where his armor is at this particular point. So that's where some sort of flashback or something is still needs to. How does he hear about Cobb Vanth? How does he hear maybe about Mando showing up? I don't know. You can just probably ask around. We don't really need a whole flashback for it because all Mando had to do was just go to Pali and just ask, have you seen any Mandalorians? Just direct them to Mos Pelgo. But wasn't, remind me, wasn't there a rumor of a Mando on Tatooine is the reason he showed up? Probably, but it could have been Boba Fett. Well, he wasn't running around in his yeah. gear, so that's not... And additionally, he's obviously in with the Tuscans, and they were dealing with Tuscans in the Marshall, so... 
He might have been around there. Might have. Just gotten lucky. I don't think it's a huge plot hole that needs no triggered, but um, I just found that interesting. Um, and so uh, after he comes up and, and he's burning and he's more scarred than he's been before, he has no eyebrows, you know, and um, they're sitting on the campfire and they're still talking about his goal of being uh, in charge of a family. Um, and he says, yeah, I need brains and muscle. You have both. So he's very flattering to her. And she turns him down. I was always wondering why he was so scarred. Like, if he says it's not Beskar, then how would it have gotten through Beskar? But obviously now we know that he was just burnt in the thing. But we didn't know that, that he went back in afterwards. Yeah. Well, but he was scarred with the Tuscans, though, too. So some acid must have gotten on him and burned, and the sun bleached yeah, him, and yeah. you know, from uh, laying in the sand. I don't know. Um, but so she turns him down. She goes, I value my freedom. I'm an independent contract. She goes, I'll work for you. I'll offer you loyalty. Yeah, that I will offer you loyalty. And he, the thing that I think gets her is when he says, I'll pledge my life uh, to protect yours and I'll cut you in. And so he's looking for a, a partner. You know, and we've been talking about her relationship with him. I think you more so than I have about how, um, you know, she's what were you saying earlier? She's. Um, not really doing much or they're yeah. not agreeing. Obviously, and... obviously they're doing more now, but she has more of a stake in it than we thought. Yeah. Technically eight D eight is still the major domo. <laughs> but uh, I don't know, I don't know. I think she is in that she speaks for Boba. He's more the protocol droid who informs them of yeah. things. Um I think the night wins. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh good. And he says the line, uh she says, Oh, you're soft. Tuscans made you soft. He goes, No. They made me strong. Made me strong. You can only get so far without a tribe. And that's really interesting for somebody, a bounty hunter. A bounty hunter. Very solitary life. Especially from what we know of him and even Django and Mando. And Mando. Um, and so now we cut to the back to tank. Um, and uh, we get the, the shot of him killing Bib again, which we see, you know, as the after credit scene of the last Mando episode. Just to what? tell people or show people who didn't see it uh i think it was just like uh with the whole um salamander go crazy uh like his drug trip fever dream yeah how it kind of like layered things together and his flashbacks coming in and out of the tank like the first time you see you see uh when it was called slave one fly right. by you see he's sad with his uh with Django's helmet. Uh, yes. I just think it was there. a part of that. Part of that. And for service of the audience, just for any of you who didn't see Mandalorian or watched to the credits. Here's a recap. He talked about killing Bib, but now you actually get to see it. Um, good. So now we're present day. We're present for the remainder, which is where we we thought this episode was going to be about. Um, eh, not so much. Well, we knew that the main thing was that he has to plan for the pikes. And you and have that table scene, which we finally had, which we did. And that's where we were thinking that that was going to happen. Um, but um, we don't uh, the, the we find out. Oh, this is where the, the droid says you are completely healed. Congratulations. And if Congrats. you look, his eyebrows are nice and full now all of a sudden. Um, and then he goes, what about the scar? Oh, you know, but, uh, you know, what? Uh, what's her name? Fennec. She goes, what about the scars? What yeah. about the internal scars? Mm -hmm. Those take longer. <laughs> um, we find out the mayor's missing. Fennec refers to their biker gang, the Mods. Not Mod Squad, but the Mods. The mods. And the Major Domo is singing like a yuzum. Yuzum, yuzum. Which, I'm like, I've heard it before, but I don't think it's a, one of the... It's not as famous as the Trandoshans or Mandalorians and stuff. So I looked it up, and it's the special edition in Jabba's Palace. It's the... Weird looking goat man. Yeah, the goat guy is like, ah, and yeah, was bah, bah. yep, and they zoom into, yeah, and so it's that guy. Um, and so obviously now we have, and Boba goes out and she goes, No, it's staying. He goes, I love this line. He goes, Power hates a vacuum. And so we need to be out there. We need people, we need to figure this out and lock things down um, and, and make some decisions. Kind of paralleling to 8D8 in the last episode saying, power vacuum afterwards after a uh, java died yeah after java there was died. a vacuum and that's where whoops things everything's gone mm -hmm. everything's done and so now where are we at so then we cut to the sanctuary i think we've been there every episode almost um Somewhere. and we see chrysanthemum sitting there drinking 
And then he slant, you know, he takes a sip, sets the sets it down, takes another sip, and he's growling. He's getting angry. And what's he looking at? He's looking at uh, these Trandoshans, and you told me that they used to hunt uh, Wookies. Well, in the expanded universe, yes. Um, Trando Trandoshans are <laughs> nerd uh, here, but uh, famous for their hunting. They'll hunt anything and everything. And Wookies and uh, Kashyyyk was close to their planet. Um, you know, in, in the Atlas and such, they were neighbors. And so they were close, they were enemies, they were rivals. Um, and if you look back, the head Tran, uh, Trandoshan, um, uh, Doc Stacy, who was um, played or voiced by and played by Robert Rodriguez, um, the first time he's providing a tribute to Boba in the first episode, it's a oh, big Wookiee yeah. pelt. So <laughs> anyways, Chrysanthemum is sitting there watching, you know, there's anger. They're and winning at gambling. Winning, having Just, a great time. <clears throat> And he goes over and just whomps on them. Not that they put up much of a fight. Just slam into a wall. Some guy broke his back on a table. Yeah, there was a crunch. Oof. And then, uh, so he's getting ready to rip the arms or arm off of a Trandoshan. And Garza comes in. Talk about Garza. This is her, this is the most she's ever spoken. She gets a little monologue. It's her kind of controlling cult-like sort of thing. She's just... Like addressing him, like you've already won in the pits. You're famous enough. You don't need you were a legend. You don't need to prove yourself anymore. But right, yeah, it's just long and it's calming. And it does. It calms him down. And it's somebody who maybe they deal with drunks or deal with gamblers. They have a, a manager has to calm people down. Yeah, and just, those traits that nice. made you legendary, that were awesome, they're now considered cruelty and cruelty. horrific. Don't do it. Right. And so you've been drinking a lot. You've got a big bar tab. Just set him down. And I'll pay will, your debt. We will pay your debt, and you'll be fine. And you're like, oh, okay, this is good. Things are fine. No. Then he rips the dude's arm off. She rolls her eyes and walks away. It's, like, funny. Then It's great. Uh, it's like what Han said. Uh, well, the whippy, Wookiees don't pull your arms out of your sockets. They lose. Yep. That line. Um, and I do like how he walks over and drops a bunch of chips, you know, credits and like he'll pay his debt. He's going to rip the arms out. And he walks right by Boba. Boba saw all this. Boba goes outside with him. He goes, uh, you know, um, hey, mate, looks like you could use a job. And this I got excited because then I'm because I'm just trying to think these next episodes. Um, he just seems like an interesting uh, character. A dynamic. Yeah. The and, unspeaking. And he's going to have respect for Boba. It's, there's no way he can say no after Boba saved, you know, his life um, there. Feed him to the ring, kill him. Um, so now we're at the table scene. The table scene finally opens up. Fennec's reminding everybody that they were very prosperous under Jabba um, before Bib took over. And, uh, you know, the, the mayor got money. And, you know, with um, they talk about Bib having guile and treachery and he outsmarted you. And he were so well off with Jabba that listen to boba and everything's going to be fine but they don't want to hear it they, they don't want to hear it they don't want to hear it why they could easily like as the guy says uh what's stopping us from killing you and taking what we want uh they have their own land they're already doing fine i don't think they really need to get into a whole war a syndicate war with the pikes uh it's just not very leadership -y. I think I they, they right now they're in charge of their own areas right yeah they, are the pikes causing them problems no it's uh like how the pikes said uh why do why do they need to pay two mm -hmm. two uh safety fees or whatever for being on their land protection yeah paying the nictos and them uh and so they're just talking and they're being very kind of confrontational uh the aqualish aren't very saying much until near the end right and in the background it was kind of all you know stringy and chill music but it, it was basically like a godfather reference on all levels here because uh i found uh the, the table scene online and it had like very very similar music so oh yeah oh really yeah, they're so taking it's a, a legit lot of illusion to that a lot of well, when George Lucas, uh, you know, he had to re-edit Star Wars a few times, and uh, he didn't like the way it was first edited, so he cut it together um, to show them the the tie fighting, the 
the t when they blasted out and escaped the Death Star in the original, and he found some old movie of uh, I think there were World War II planes, aerial combats, and he cut together sequences from that. And it's almost shot for shot what they ended up using when Luke's down and Han are shooting at at ties, you know. Great, I got one. Don't get cocky, kid. That scene. Um, and so I think they uh, that they would do that as needed. Uh, yeah, Boba says, I have no designs of your territory. Because right now they're kind of the bosses. The Pikes, you know, they're drug runners. They make money off drugs. And, and Doc Stasi, uh, the Trandoshan, says, you know, we make money off the Spice. We're good. Why should we bleed for you, Boba? That You have a problem with them. You'll make more money if you side with Boba. Which is well, that's what he's saying. He goes, I don't want your territory, so you can keep your territory. I, I don't just, want anything. Just work together. I don't need tribute pikes. from you. I don't need quarter. I expect none either. I have mutually beneficial. And so he ultimately says, what's the proposition? Band just together, kill the pikes. No. Get them out because of here. Because they said no to the pikes. And he goes, okay, then here's what I offer. Don't side with them. If they ask you to go against me, stay neutral, is what he said. And so, wait a minute. So you guys, Boba, you're asking me not to, I don't have to give you anything, and I don't have to fight with you. I don't have to get my people killed. It's not going to cost me anything. Yeah. So all he has to do is just stay neutral if the pikes come after me. And they like that. And that's where the guys, that they said, uh, he Baba says, I'll fight them alone. I'll fight these interlopers and I'll make the streets safe again. And um the last guy who was like, Why don't we kill you? The the Klatuinian, the dog faced one, he goes, I abide. So I agree. And he was the last one to consent. And so while they aren't necessarily um joining his army, you know, they are saying we're gonna stay out of it and we'll just watch from the sideline. So um why don't you take it home here? We got the final scene of them on the balcony watching the people leave between Fennec and Boba. Oh, you forgot to mention the the Rancor scare. Oh, all right. Okay. Um, oh, that was after the Klaturini goes, what, why don't we just kill you? And take whatever What's going to keep want. us? And then, yeah, that's... Bang! You know, clang on the, the metal from below and basically saying, uh, you side with me and he'll stay down there. Otherwise, we're coming for you. The table, the banquet table, is set up over the Rancor pit. And so you see the Rancor's claws come out, and Boba takes some food, and, and he feeds him. He goes, I think he's a little hungry. And I love it, because he didn't respond to the threat, just, I think he's hungry. And I saw that as a subtle threat, passive-aggressive or blatant, whatever he wants. You know, threaten me again, and we'll see what happens. And the, the loud bang didn't even make him jump he just sat there yeah and he just feeds him like a dog or a pet off the table and so yeah that was a good scene so we're at the very end balcony as they seem to end every single episode yeah the last two for sure they're just standing there talking uh watching everybody else leave and then uh like we're gonna need more muscle uh you can purchase it if you know where to look and then you hear the little the, the the little Mando light motif go off. Yeah, a little then, something. Then credits roll. Credits. And so that's leading us to think the Mandalorian. No wonder he's so excited about Din 567. Jaren is going to show up. And that would be awesome. And no, what's interesting, though, is if he never takes his helmet off, it doesn't even have to be Pedro Pascal. If there's much of fighting because he always has his stunt people fight. Yeah. They just need him to do the voiceovers. It's got to be. I hope so, too. But, yeah, she asks him, uh, uh, she goes, Don't, do you trust him? He goes, I trust them to work for their self, in their self, own self-interest. My deal is better than Pikes. They may be stubborn, but they know the Pikes will take over the planet. It'll start here, and they'll eventually have to bow to them. And so he knows that they're going to act in their best interest. But either way, we must prepare for war. And that's why she says, how much treasure do you have? And he goes, oh, I got enough. I've got a few credits. And she goes, credits can buy muscle if you know where to look. I wondered, why wouldn't Boba think about that? He's already hired the mods. He's hired Kersantin. He's So he's recruiting muscle, too. I don't know. Maybe he just wants to keep it local. Local? That, but, I mean, he's got, who knows? Maybe maybe he can go and get Dangar. Maybe he can go get Bosk. Any of his old connections from 
you know, the, the movies or his adventures. But if you build these relationships with these people and like you're still paying them, but they're loyal to you and they're not hired muscle, they're going to like, I don't know, they're going to stay loyal to you even after this war is over. You're going to gain a following. The following is what good. he needs. He needs, he wants a following, but in the present, I mean, he's fine with mercenaries, you know? And so that makes, if Mando's coming, is Mando coming along? When did he hire mercenaries? He needs to hire oh, so mercenaries. He said he was fine with them. He's not fine with them. He's not fine with he them. He hasn't used them. He's going to. He's that's what the, that's what Mando's going to do. Don't just t tell him to do it cuz he's he's got the money. He's heartwarmed now. Heartwarmed cuz he got rid of uh baby Yoda. So would well and that's something that's interesting. We'll find out what Mando does because with the season that they're shooting now that we'll get who knows a year from now. Um you know what does he do? immediately after Grogu and what does he do with his time and adventure and if he gets recruited here does he come alone does anybody come with him is it just him I'd be fine with just him I think he'd be alone because he's not going with anybody right now well he doesn't have a razor crest remember yep. his ship blew up um Cara Dune's not going to be there because she got fired from Disney oh right right yeah so the last we see her she's on the bridge there when you, when uh, Grogu leaves um what happened uh, she had some stuff online that she had said and, um, you know, taken different ways and was very outspoken huh. uh, with unpopular opinions. And, and then Disney just, no, eh, she's not no. going to be returning, they said. You know, Bo-Katan, maybe? Eh, I don't know. I mean, if she's... put up their ways, she's probably still angry. She still her. wants a Darksaber, so yeah. maybe she'll, they'll talk. Um, Mayfeld? Because here's the thing, they Probably. talked they about it. They kind of just let him go, though. They were going to have another Disney Plus series, uh, Rangers of the Republic or something of the New Republic. And it was rumored that, you know, she was going to be the feature, Cara Dune. And maybe somebody like Mayfeld, you know, put together her little uh, crew and, and go around the galaxy. And that's what that was supposed to be. And I think that might be dead at this point. Yeah, it's dead. It might be. Um... Gosh, the only other people with names that are still alive or aren't bad guys from it, we've already seen. Um, you know, there's the armorer, armorer, you know, from Mando. You know, if she would show up. I think. I mean, she's a great fighter, we she saw. She probably died off screen, though. I hope not, but a lot will get cleared up. But but what about Cobb Vamp? He's already on planet. They'll and probably get him. I Boba mean, has his armor. Yeah. Not that he ever met him, but he knows of that individual who's still still there and i don't know how what was it moss um pelgo. It pelgo i don't know how far away mars moss pelgo is but Probably very but if he's got his starship or fire spray he'll be able to to find his way pretty uh pretty easily um yeah i just found it weird that boba didn't think to hire muscle with his treasure and that fennec had to bring it up i just found yeah. that weird because i pretty much guarantee you know he's been hired out for work before uh as hired muscle um, you know, not just to go and find bounties. Um, but uh, he did say that, uh, like, don't work for scug holes or something like that. And then there's also, he talked about uh, he doesn't want to put, like, anybody else under that, like, non-loyal stuff. So if he does get a mercenary, I think... He wants to know, rule with would, respect, Yeah, like it, you it said. would just seem oh. kind of out of character now that he's different. Yeah, he's different. He he's he wants the power. He wants to make money. Um, I know I want to protect it. Um, any other parting thoughts of this episode or things you want to bring up or things that were of note? Um, I didn't see Chris O'Dowd. <laughs> That's really it. No. And I was thinking about it more. You know, we've gotten one IT crowd actor in each series, so it's not going to be this series. It'll be the Kenobi series that he shows up in. Or Andor. Okay. That's I'll, my guess. So, I'll place that back. so I don't think he's going to show up in these next three episodes. I think they'll just do one at each time. And then plus they'll hear this podcast and be like, that was a great idea. We didn't think about that. How much are we betting on this? None. Respect. We got, oh, oh, because when there this, is no if, respect. If it, this is like hitting a one-outer in poker and calling, it's going to be the two of hearts. And it's two of hearts, you'd be looking at me like, wow. So I'll just take that. Okay. I'll just take that. Okay. Um, do you think we'll ever get a name for the fire spray? No. Not at all? No. What would you call it if you could? Anything but the fire spray. 
What would you call it? I don't know. Slave One. I don't have a name. You can't think of one, huh? I Do don't you? know. Um, Do you spend your wait last week? No, hours thinking just about something Bulba related, you know. The bounty um, hunter. You know, something to do with either uh, Camino or, you know, where he was raised or if you went to the roots of Mandalore or where his dad Django is from Concord Dawn, um, you know, called the Concord. I, I don't know, just something. Um, yeah. That's really it. I think that might be about it. The flashbacks, I think, uh, like you said, we're done. Um, you know, jumping back, there, there's got to be something. I, I just can't think of major plot things that they haven't been checked off yet. Can you? Um, off the top of your head? Obviously, you already said how he gets his armor back. Yeah. And now, in really meeting Fennec, as we said at the start, we were wondering, do they? did he know her? You know, they already have a relationship with yeah, the thing. Yeah. And that clearly is no. And so that was established by him saving her. And obviously we know he got to the, like, the force planet thing that Baby Yoda went to in, I think it was episode seven, where he actually gets abducted in the tragedy. Mm. That's what it was Oh, in called. season two? And obviously we know how he got uh, there. Six. He just followed. No, it was seven. Seven's the believer. Eight's the rescue. Because there's only I, eight I, episodes. There's only eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so, all right. Yeah, it's five. Eight. Yes. Yeah, I, um, yeah, timeline has been, uh, we, we clearly know where we're at now um, with regards to um, how close he is to the Mando timeline because of not just, well, fi finding Fennec. And so like, okay, Mando's running around. But we don't know how much time occurs during the Mando seasons. You know, him flying around with Grogu. How long was he doing that? Not that we need to know an answer. Years. But we just needed to, we needed to sync up and we are definitely having an overlap now we are synced I'd you know he, and you know that way it makes sense when he's looking for his armor after the crate dragon that's the first time we see boba's back um well, out of space rather and so now we know exactly where we're at well obviously we're synced because we saw the the lens flares in the flash that's what i'm saying so between we're getting really close season to that present. one and season two i'd say there's not much time yeah so we're probably very very close and all of this stuff in the present happened after he got his stuff from Mando season two. And so the present is right after the Mandalorian that we saw. So um, I think we're all getting in the same the same era. I'm so curious how he bib Fortuna double cross Boba. Maybe that will show up. Um, I think it was I, just I don't a, know. a mention. Oh, there's something. We haven't mentioned it yet. The black clothes. Tuscan, she's dead. Get over it. Maybe we've gone past the Tuscans. We have, and maybe just his connection to them as a familial unit, um, and his guilt of having them all slaughtered. We don't need his individual connection with that one person as much as I was maybe hoping that they're trying to figure out why he would stay. Um, but killing them all, he took away. We didn't even have to focus on that. So. Um, All right. Well, thank you again, and we'll talk to you next week. Uh, thanks for listening. Right. This is Mall Rats Podcast. I'm Bob. Yeah, I'm Nolan. I'll see ya. See you next time.